Blessed Mother, intercede for us that we may enter into this Mass as if it were our first Mass, our last Mass, and our only Mass. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Procedamos in pace, in nomine Christi. Amen. <clears throat> Your priests, O Lord, shall be clothed with justice. Your holy ones shall ring out their joy. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brothers and sisters, we gather in prayer um, in this uh, third week of the Easter season. And as I alluded to yesterday, we begin now a stretch of uh, consecutive days in which we will have a different saint to celebrate uh, each day. As we met St. Stephen in the lectionary yesterday, uh, we will read today of his martyrdom. But today in our uh, in our calendar, we actually have two saints, uh, St. Peter Channel and uh, and the saint that we will be celebrating uh, in today's uh, mass, because uh, it's an either or option. Uh, so we will be celebrating St. Louis de Montfort. Uh, for those who have, uh, some have asked, is, is that the St. Louis that our parish is named after? No, that would be Louis the Ninth of, of France. Uh, but this is Louis de Montfort, who, uh, who some of you might be quite familiar with because of his uh, instrumental role in offering guidance and teaching and inspiration for uh, true devotion to our Blessed Virgin Mary uh, and consecration to her, which I'll talk more about uh, in the homily. So brothers and sisters, let us call to mind our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You were seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. And Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who will to direct the steps of the priest, St. Louis, along the way of salvation and of the love of Christ, in the company of the Blessed Virgin, grant us by his example that meditating on the mysteries of your love, we may strive tirelessly for the building up of your church. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Stephen said to the people, the elders and the scribes, you stiff-necked people, uncircumcised in mind and heart and ears, you always oppose the Holy Spirit. You are just like your ancestors. Which of the prophets did your ancestors not persecute? They put to death those who foretold the coming of the righteous one, whose betrayers and murderers you have now become. You received the law as transmitted by angels, but you did not observe it. When they heard this, they were infuriated, and they ground their teeth at him. But Stephen, filled with the Holy Spirit, looked up intently to heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. And Stephen said, Behold, I see the heavens opened, and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they cried out in a loud voice, covered their ears, and rushed upon him together. They threw him out of the city and began to stone him. The witnesses laid down their cloaks at the feet of a young man named Saul. As they were stoning Stephen, he called out, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he fell to his knees and cried out in a loud voice, And when he had said this, 
he fell asleep. Now Saul was consenting to his execution. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Be my rock of refuge, a stronghold to give me safety. You are my rock and my fortress. For your name's sake, you will lead me and guide me. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Into your hands, I commend my spirit. You will redeem me, O Lord, O faithful God. My trust is in the Lord. I will rejoice and be glad of your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your kindness. You hide them in the shelter of your presence from the plottings of men. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. The crowd said to Jesus, What sign can you do that we may see and believe in you? What can you do? Our ancestors ate manna in the desert as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. So Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, it was not Moses who gave the bread from heaven. My Father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. So they said to Jesus, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never hunger and whoever believes in me will never thirst. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So as I said, we just read of the uh, martyrdom of St. Stephen. And at the most basic level, one of the most basic things that it speaks to us of is the imitation of Christ. Stephen imitated not only the life of Christ and the boldness of Christ in preaching the kingdom and in calling uh, people to repentance and inviting them in his mercy to, to convert their hearts and lives to follow Christ. Not only did he imitate Christ in his preaching, but even in his death. And if you look at the death of Stephen next to the death of Christ, you will see profound uh, parallels of the mercy that they offer to their persecutors. We will see that mercy bearing fruit in the conversion of Saul by the end of the week, uh, and also uh, in the trust in the Father. And so thus fittingly, that with the martyrdom of St. Stephen, we, we pray uh, that Psalm 31, in which we remember, into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit, as Christ prayed from the cross as well. And so if we were to contemplate what it means to imitate Christ, we come back to the topic that we began yesterday and looking at the bread of life dis discourse and noticing how Christ acknowledges the hunger in every human heart and that it is indeed a hunger that only he can fill. But that we don't just quickly, easily and flippantly say, don't you know your hunger for Jesus, right? But we invite them we walk with them in that hunger and invite them to discover as we offer to introduce them to the one who satisfies that hunger, that Christ is indeed the bread given to us from heaven. He is indeed the one who satisfies us even in a desert, right? And so part of, part of one of the most effective ways that we do evangelize, that we do witness to the gospel, or shall I say can, to leave the offer on the table and invite each and every one of us to take it up. One of the most effective ways that we can evangelize is by the way that we trust in the Lord in the midst of the desert, that we trust in him, that we hope in him, that we have peace, that we have joy in the midst of enduring uh, a kind of desert. Um, and so we recognize that we must walk with people in that hunger. So I acknowledged yesterday that, that part of how we offer to feed people um, 
that, that always the most effective and primary form of evangelization is always going to be person to person, even if that's over the phone, even if that's six feet apart, even if that's with those within your own home, right? That the primary form of evangelization is person to person, but that we should be clear about not wanting to hide our faith and be bold and willing to share it, even in ways that rather plant seeds, such as, for example, I mentioned uh, sharing some of these parish videos on Facebook. But these are the things that plant seeds. If we are to, if we are to indeed effectively satisfy the hunger of God's people, then we must be willing to sow those seeds. And that takes time. That takes investment. That takes journeying with others, even in the midst of a desert, even in the midst of hunger, even in the midst of learning as we go. And it's okay to still be learning and still be figuring it out, how to trust in Christ and hope in him and find peace and joy in him, even in the midst of what seems to be a desert situation. And so that commitment to keep walking with another and to, with a spirit of saying, let's, let's go on this journey together. Let's walk together as we together seek Christ, the one who satisfies the hunger in both of our hearts, right? And so uh, as I think about that, it makes me think of St. Louis de Montfort, right? In particular, uh, the part of that journey, if you will, that he is most known for having contributed to, if you will, is... Uh, within the realm of true devotion to Mary, as, as his classic uh, writing is entitled. But that true devotion to Mary is a, is a complement to his more significant contribution, which is a guide and a plan for a 33-day preparation. 33-day. Notice that this takes time. This takes commitment. This takes daily constant vigilance in walking with the Lord, right? Uh, that 33-day preparation for a consecration to the Blessed Virgin Mary, right? Uh, and this was in the midst of a time, and, and this is still very pertinent today, uh, in which there is much confusion uh, about true devotion to Mary, about certainly about a consecration to Mary, uh, that on one hand, we have Christians who might be afraid uh, that uh, devoting oneself to Mary, even consecrating oneself to Mary, all the more so, might take the focus away from Christ. Um, and on the other hand, we might have Christians who, out of a sincere devotion, uh, perhaps misunderstand what it means that our everything about our faith is centered in Christ, and therefore our devotion to Mary, properly understood, is centered in Christ. And so, and so it is indeed possible. Uh, for one to set out upon a, a way of approaching devotion to Mary that, that could take that center and that focus off of Christ. Um, however, I, I propose to you that it's not as easy as one thinks because Mary herself points us to Christ most effectively, and all she wants is to help us to open our hearts to him and to, uh, to, to give our lives to him, right? And so, uh, so as, as, I, as I'm fond of saying, that if you get to know the real Mary, she will not let you worship her, right? So, uh, but in the midst of all that confusion, so enters Louis de Montfort into the scene uh, and, and wants to offer guidance in the midst of this, to say, okay, here's, here's some of the ways we can misunderstand devotion to Mary. Notice the title, True Devotion to Mary. True devotion to Mary is centered in Christ. True devotion to Mary allows her, gives her total freedom to teach us because we need to know, right? That is part of humbling ourselves. We don't know how to open our hearts to Christ and we need help, right? And so we allow her to guide our hearts. This is what true devotion to Mary looks like because all she is going to do is teach us how to open our hearts to Christ. But how does Louis de Montfort do that? He says, in a sense, if you will, he says, let's do this together. Let's do a 33-day preparation together. This is what it's going to look like. It was, it was a great joy to um, right at the 
more or less at, at the beginning of the year, um, a year that's been very interesting thus far. Um, not what any of us expected that uh, we began um, by a number of members of the parish and the, ex uh, the invitation was extended to all, uh, made a consecration together, utilizing guidance from Louis de Montfort, as well as Maximilian Colby, as well as uh, John Paul II, as well as uh, St. Teresa of Calcutta. Um, and, and a lot of that was, was summarized in the book that most people use by Father Michael Gately, uh, but that we, we did it together, right? We went about the 33-day 33, 33 preparation together. If you were a part of that, I encourage you to, to, uh, to take some time today and, and ask Mary to continue to walk with you and to continue to guide your heart and teach you to open your heart to him. Um, if you haven't done a consecration, I encourage you to consider it. Uh, but regardless, notice how Louis de Montfort wants to clarify what is true devotion to Mary. What does this actually look like? Let's do it together. Let's go about this journey together. Friends, that is how we are to relate to one another, that we, we all share this hunger in our hearts for Christ. It's not necessary to always speak in the past tense when we say, I was hungering for Christ. I am hungering for Christ. I am hungry for him. And yet even now he satisfies me. Even in this desert, he sustains me. Let us really ask Mary to help us to be docile to the Holy Spirit, to recognize who are the people that he is inviting us to walk with and to journey with, to sow those seeds by going about this journey together of walking in the desert and learning to trust in Christ. So through the intercession of St. Louis de Montfort and, of course, of our Blessed Virgin Mary, may we all walk that journey together and learn a little more each day of what it means to trust our Lord. So we place all of our prayers in the hands of our loving Father as we pray for the whole church, for Francis, our Pope, Daniel, our Bishop, for all the clergy and all the faithful. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our world, for an increase in peace, justice, respect for all human life. We pray for an end to this pandemic, for all who are sick, for the safety and health of our healthcare workers and prudence and guidance for our leaders. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our community, especially any among us who may be sick, suffering, hurting in any way that they may know the consolation of Jesus Christ crucified and the hope of his resurrection. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. And for uh, the freedom and purification of the church, St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all evil spirits, who wander through the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. And for Dorothy Bevage, for whom this Mass is being offered, and for all of those near and dear to our own hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. With loving confidence, Heavenly Father, we entrust all of our prayers to you, trusting in your holy will, for you are good, and your love endures forever. We ask all of these things through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, and it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. But through your goodness, we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive, O Lord, we pray, the offerings placed on your altar in commemoration of blessed Louis de Montfort, that so that, as you brought him glory, you may, through these sacred mysteries, grant to us your pardon, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously. When Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed, he never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more the Lamb once slain, who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up. For you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Daniel, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. 
Rule him and with him and in him, O God Almighty, Father, in the unity of the whole Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. The Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever lord jesus christ who said to your apostles peace i leave you my peace i give you look not on our sins but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever amen the peace of the lord be with you always Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold, him who takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. <clears throat> Blessed is the servant whom the Lord finds watching when he comes. Amen, I say to you, he will put that servant in charge of all of his property. Hallelujah. <laughs>
prayer for spiritual communion. I believe that you, O oh Lord, are in the most holy sacrament. I love you and desire you. Come into my heart. I embrace you, O oh, never leave me. May the burning and most sweet power of your love, O oh, Jesus, absorb my being and make me holy. Amen. Let us pray. May partaking at the heavenly table, almighty God, confirm and increase strength from on high in all who celebrate the feast day of blessed Louis de Montfort, that we may preserve in integrity the gift of faith and walk in the path of salvation you trace for us through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. And uh, let us, uh, as Louis de Montfort would want us to, let us end by singing to our mother who helps us to open our hearts to Christ in greater trust, greater faith, hope, and love. Immaculate Mary, all praises we sing. You reign now in splendor with Jesus our King. Ave, ave, ave Maria, ave, ave Maria.